So here at the big build, we are doing the final touches to the roof tiling. So we've actually got the last of the roof windows going in. These are a conservation roof window, which basically means the flashings are black. They're a little bit lower in the roof and they look quite nice on a period property such as this or a barn. Yep, pretty straightforward, no different to any of the other roof windows. The flashing arrangement is exactly the same as well. These obviously work with soakers up the sides and Andy's busy just finishing that off. We'll go up and have a chat with him right now. It's a really nice part of the build when you get everything all closed in and the tiling on. Let's get up and have a little look at that now. So Andy's just going up the sides of the roof lights, just trimming in his tile and a halves and everything else and putting the soakers up. Nearly there, mate. Nearly there, mate. That's good. That's one nice valley there, look. Last two windows. Last two windows, yeah, exactly. My client is using energy here. We're in the middle of nowhere, so we're almost off grid, if you like. Uh, we have got electricity, but we've got no gas. So basically the choices of heating for us are things like ground source, air source, oil, wood pellet, and all the rest of it. So after lots of deliberation and being the fact that we are creating a much better envelope, I mean, the roof is a super insulated envelope. It's very airtight. So we have opted for an air source heat pump with overlay wet underfloor heating all the way throughout the ground floor. Partly the ground floor is insulated and partly it isn't. We're going over an existing solid floor and we've had to take all these things into consideration when designing the underfloor heating to give us the correct amount of heat off the heat pump and so on and so forth. Now there's a lot of controversy around heat pumps but we've done our sums and we can put our hands on our hearts and we're fairly confident that we can actually use an air source heat pump effectively here because we've upgraded the building in such a way right down to using a cavity closure which is really well insulated and really well built in. We've eliminated as many air spaces as possible. We've got forced ventilation and all the rest of it. So we, we're in control of the structure and how we can justify how well the structure is performing even before we're finished is I've got a device which I'm going to place in the building which every time I turn up it will send me all the data. It will send me temperature, it will send me humidity and it will show me the drops. So even without heating, once we've got our final windows in, we'll be able to see the daytime temperature, what it rises up to with just the solar gain and the nighttime temperature, what it drops. So I can then see, even without a heating on, I can actually see what the drop is. And when I was building my own house, I did exactly the same thing. And we have a modern timber framed house, which is really well insulated. It's full of PIR and all the rest of it, and it's airtight. We only got a drop of no more than two degrees from daytime to nighttime, which was fantastic because that means that once you've got heating in the building, let's say you run your thermostats at 21 degrees and you have a setback at eight, say of 18 and you turn it off at nighttime, which is what I do, it's only going to drop back to about 19 based on the performance of the building, which is never going to kick in. So the setback is never going to kick in and it worked really well. So we're going to put solar on as well. Now we're going to put 13 solar panels. We've got a configuration of nine where Andy's just up there working and we've got four here. This is the first time we've used an integrated solar system on the roof. We've got some guys here who are actually going to do the install with us. These guys are obviously approved for the electrical side of it. Um, a lot of regular electricians, even though the people are all you know certified and all the rest of it, they, they, they don't have this particular qualification. So we're going to do that. Now this solar system is actually in like a roof window. It's set back in, it's not on top. The flashings and the tiles meet it nice and seamlessly, just like it. See, there's a roof window up there. So it's very similar to that with a black flashing as well. So we're going to get on. We've got all the components laid out. There's loads of boxes, as you can imagine. There's five of us here and we've got today to do it. Get the nine up there, get the four up here, fit them all in get the flashings round. We won't probably tile them today, that will happen in the next couple of days, but we just need to get the flashings in for now. 
So we've got some of the solar in now. This is the first time we've actually installed this system. This is an inline system. It's flat and flush and it's tiled in a little bit like a roof window. In fact, the flashings are very, very similar to typical roof windows, whether they're the Velux or the Facros, they're very similar. But there's a couple of things you need to consider. First of all, take your time, read the instructions, sort out all the bits and pieces in advance. They're all color coded, the flashings, which is quite useful and it's directed us to start in the bottom left corner and work through in a series. Now, a lot of these flashings here, unlike a roof window which is screwed on, these are all like a friction fit. So they're pushed in between grooves that have got barbed gaskets in them. Now the gaskets on a day like today when it's quite cold, they're quite stiff. So I do think that um, they, they ask you to use a lubrication Windaline in the video that we saw, but we've got something very similar. Couldn't find Windaline this morning. And it seems to do the trick. But I think that the key to this or installing these types of products is have enough of you here. It's not a two man job. I think it's a three man job to be fair, just because two to hold, one to pass and, and so on and so forth. And also bear in mind, you know, you're working uh, here on a long sort of roof slope and this is 45 degrees, so it's quite steep. So I do think that you just got to take your time, get set up, and if you think it's going to take a day, allow a couple of days, because we, we're, um, well, it's nearly two o'clock and we're not 75% of the way through it yet. So that's my little bit of advice, but we're going to get on and finish it off and before it gets dark. So we're actually working with the guys who are doing the actual electric side if you like and what they've got here is they're actually as we're putting these panels in they test the panels before they come up so you want to check the continuity that there's actually nothing wrong with them before you put them in it's a male and a female so for example this one plug to that one plug to that one and to this one to this one to this one and so on and so forth and then they start and they've got one end there one end at the end and then they'll take those over to the equipment so it's fairly straightforward plug and play but obviously you need to be able to know what you're doing with the other bit and I don't know what I'm doing yet so it's we're learning the job but I will say on the whole because it all fits hard against the battens it's really quite straightforward and the flashings as you see there's no screws showing everything pushes in but here where we're going to push in the next piece of flashing we're pushing two bits in and there's a couple of instances where there's actually three layers of metal as well so it is a little bit difficult it's just a matter of making sure that these gaskets are well lubed up and everything's fine so we finished the solar got all the panels in got all the flashings round and as i said they're just like some of the roof windows that you're used to fitting however the flashings aren't fixed with screws and trims that get screwed they're actually a friction fit and they push into the sides of the panels the panels push together with the very thin flashing so you've got a very small neat down the center you've got 30 millimeters and where they butt you've literally got five to ten millimeters so they are a thing of beauty and Andy has gone round with the tile and a halves he's cut them all back in he's got it all through the ridges are through the top and this gets us to very near the end of the big build roof if you like Andy's up there, he's literally doing the last bit of pointing on the ridge. It's the only bit of pointing that goes on the ridge, to be fair. It's a dry ridge system, it's ventilated, and it's mechanically fixed, which I really like as well. So there he is, he's up the top there. He's literally just doing the final detail. We've been cladding the gable here with a pre-painted softwood cladding, which is lovely, because you know it's painted all round and we've just got a little bit on this gable to do, finish the other gables and get on here. So yes, this is effectively our topping out session at the big build. Now the topping out is basically when the highest stone was laid. I know it's not technically the highest stone, that was over there. But normally in tradition, you have a glass of something at the same time, but we can't do that on site. So I think I'll have a glass of something tonight to commemorate this epic day. It's been a bit of a journey We've been lucky that for some of the roof we have the cover over the top, but we couldn't finish it with the cover because of the damage it could be when the scaffold's coming down. We had a storm yesterday called Storm Barra, and although we weren't affected like Northern Ireland and some of the northeast of England, we did get a bit of a hit and it had a fantastic rain test. So I've been inside and there's not a drop of water getting in anywhere. And so that's it. So Andy's up there, look, he's just literally 
point in the last bit, he's done a sterling job. And that pretty much gets us through the roof on the big build. Thanks for joining me. Keep checking back soon. We've got loads of exciting stuff coming up.